Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. Just a note that when I'm gone on my cruise, and it's still got a few days away, uh, but when I'm gone, I won't be doing any of these uh, because I won't have internet access. So, um, But I'm going on my cruise in nine days, so hopefully I can get uh, nine more of these up. But we're in Exodus 24, verse 1. Let's go right to it. I'm going to go one through eight today. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance, but Moses alone is to approach the Lord. The others must not come near, and the people may not come up with him. So God has been talking only to Moses. God's now going to grant a limited access, not full access, but a limited access to some of the leaders. All right, Aaron's his brother. Nadab and Abihu are his sons, Aaron's sons. Okay, and these are the leaders. You know, they're they're going to come up, and God's going to show himself to them a limited way. Moses, he's got the direct contact with. Verse 3, when Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, everything the Lord has said we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. And thankfully, he did. That's why we have it. All right. He got up early the next morning. And built an altar at the foot of the mountain. Okay, so he's doing this for the people. Because remember, him and the, the leaders get to go up the mountain to approach God. Okay, but he built an altar at the foot of the mountain, set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And you're going to see this a lot. The 12 stones, 12 tribes. You're going to see the number 12 a lot when you get in the New Testament, 12 disciples. Okay, verse 5. Then he sent young Israelite men, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Now, nowadays we worship and we sing and we praise God. Back then, the way to, and, and we do offer offerings, our money, but back then they offered animals. They didn't really deal with money too much. They offered animals. That's how they, they worship God. In verse 6, Moses took half of the blood. Now watch this half of the blood and put it in bowls and the other half he splashed against the altar. Now the important thing about this, everything was cleansed with blood. Now what do you think this is referring to? Remember when you're reading the Old Testament, it's preparing you for what we're going to learn about Jesus in the New Testament. Everything that happened with the Israelites prepared them for later things. So when you see blood you know, this, the the wheel should be turning in your head. Blood. That's right. Christ's blood cleanses us. So, but the, even the altar couldn't be clean without blood. So he took the blood and he put it in the altar. In verse seven, then he took the book of the covenant, and that would be equivalent to our Bible, right? And read it to the people. They responded, "We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey." Great response. That's not going to stay that way, but at least for this moment that we're reading, they did good. And the last verse we're going to read today. And this is so important. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people. Remember, he'd only taken half and put it against the, the altar. So he's got, he's still got half left. So he's sprinkling it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. All right. Now, does that sound familiar? Remember, He's sprinkling his blood on the people. And when Jesus comes at the Last Supper and he tells them to take the fruit of the vine, the grape juice, the wine, he says, this is the blood of the covenant. So he made a new covenant when they celebrated that Lord's Supper with his disciples. So you see the Old Testament and New Testament all come together. What a lot of Christians don't understand, but hopefully you do because you're getting taught by somebody who does understand it. You can't understand the New Testament unless you read the Old Testament. You can't understand Jesus unless you read Moses. You don't really, I mean, don't get the full picture. You can understand certain things, sure. You get the full picture. So now, because Jesus' blood, because he shed his blood on the cross, his perfect blood, we're cleansed by that blood. Now, it isn't literally sprinkled on us, but every time we take the Lord's Supper, we're reminded of that. And we're cleansed on a continual basis. Moses was just cleansing these people ceremonially. They, they didn't have their sins wiped out. That would take a savior to do that. And thankfully, we have one. All right. 
incredible, amazing, deep stuff. If you don't completely understand it, listen, nobody does. Nobody does. It's it's one of the most uh, uh, powerful things in the world that Christ's blood saves us from sin. And it was even powerful back then that the blood of animals could cleanse people. So even, even that aspect is pretty darn powerful. I don't know if I've went long or not today. I got to check, but we're done. And I'm going to shut this thing off in a second. A little bit long. Yeah, hey, still, I'm getting pretty good at this now. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. Deep stuff. Uh, pray about it. Meditate on it. See if you can, if God will give you more insight into this because you're getting in, into the, what I call the deep waters. Okay. Not just, you know, a, your ABCs, but now you're getting into your, you know, your heavy calculus and stuff like that in the Bible. All right. I love you so much. I love this part of the word of God. And we will come back next time and continue in this little area on the next edition of Take 5.